Welcome to the Top Business Leaders Podcast. You'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more and to download our show notes, go to topbusinessleaders.com. I'm delighted to welcome Stacey Riska to our show today. Welcome. Great to be with you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us your story. Oh boy, story it is. <laughs> your listeners might want to grab their bag of popcorn and certainly a box of tissues because it's a story. So I've always been a serial entrepreneur. My first business was doing outsourcing before it was even a buzzword. And I did that for 10 years and then sort of had my midlife crisis and realized that I needed something fun and different to do. So what else would you do besides start a Hawaiian coffee and smoothie business? <laughs> makes sense, right? Well, that's what I did. And I'm in the Washington, D.C. area. In two years, I literally took over the area. I had two stores at Dulles Airport, one store in a mall, um, three food trucks. I was one of the first trucks in the area and 10 of these mobile tiki bars that we were taking all over the D.C. area. So, Dan, the growth was great, but so was the crash and burn. Because, you see, this was 2008, and the economy just came to a halt. Nobody was going to the mall just to get a smoothie. Nobody was traveling, despite I was paying the highest rents in the country. Nobody was doing anything. And I woke up one day. $500,000 in debt. And I did not know where my next customer was coming from. And those were really dark days. And I remember after working many 120 hour weeks, driving home one day, and I just started crying. But I mean, not just crying, like literally bawling and heaving and literally couldn't catch my breath. I had to pull over on the side of the road. It probably took me, you know, five to 10 minutes to get my composure. And I remember it so vividly. And when I finally came through, I remember what was playing on the radio, which was Kelly Clarkson's What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger. <laughs> I was like, that is my new theme song. So when I got home, I walk in and there's a big mirror in my foyer. And I looked in that mirror with my, my tear sodden eyes. And I said, Stacy, you are at your proverbial come to Jesus moment. You are at that fork in the road. And you need to decide whether you're going to throw in the towel, give it all up, lose your house, your business, your family. You know, I, I was depressed, possibly lose my life, or fight to save your business. And I'll tell you what, Dan, you know, I looked at it not from an emotional decision standpoint, but from a business standpoint. And when I looked at my numbers, I knew that I could and should have a profitable business what was holding me back was that person looking in the mirror, me. I was not doing the marketing. And from that moment, I got into action, literally. I mean that literally and figuratively. And went into my office and said, what can I do right now to get my business growing? And I laid out six simple steps, which are now the formula that I use in helping my clients grow their business and is the foundation of my book, Small Business Marketing Made Easy, where I help and teach small business owners how to grow a successful business. Well, did it work? Yeah. In two years, I transformed my business from $500,000 in debt to a seven-figure profitable business. And people started hearing about it. And coming to me and saying, Stacy, God, I hear you're doing all these great things with marketing. Can you teach me how to do it? You know, no, forget that. Can you just do it for me? I was like, yes, I can. Because I actually love doing marketing. So I then started the Small Biz Marketing Specialist, where I help small business owners get their marketing done. And so now today, I have both do it yourself, done with you, done for you, as well as a coaching and mastermind program. But however I'm helping small business owners, it's really all based 
on what I call the action system, which is laid out in my book, six simple steps to get your marketing into action. That's a quite a story. It's very inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Tell us more about the book, because that's what we're focusing on. Um, so first of all, let's double check the name of the book. And why did you decide to write the book? The book is called Small Business Marketing Made Easy. And it's not E-A-S-Y. It's E-Z, the letters E-Z. And I think that's a really important distinction because too many small business owners are always thinking they just want to boom, hit the easy button and wake up tomorrow with $10 million in the bank. Now, small business marketing is easy, E-Z. It means, yeah, you might have to put some sweat and grease into it, but all you have to do are six simple things. And so that's what I've laid out in the book. I created an acronym, ACTION, and each letter stands for how you put together your marketing plan. Great. Now, why did you decide to write the book? You know, I because as you alluded to in the beginning, I have a story. And so, so many people, when they hear that story, $500,000 in debt, they're like, how do you overcome that, right? And I am really passionate about helping small business owners. That's why my nickname is Small Business Stacy. And so I felt that it was sort of a way for me to give back to the small business community by sharing my story, but also my lessons learned, what I did to transform my business. Because what I did works not only for me, it can work for anybody. And how has the book helped you? Well, the book has helped me many ways. I, I think it was a therapeutic uh, process to start because it helped me get all my thoughts out and, and all those ugly times, um, what I learned from it. And I think there, there is a process, uh, you know, that's a helpful process. What it's ultimately helped me do is grow my business. It's helped me get my name out there, establish myself as a credible and authoritative um, person. Because in the marketing world, everybody does marketing and everybody claims to be a guru, but yet nobody practices what they preach. <laughs> I am somebody who practices what they preach. And so I take the lessons that I learned in transforming my coffee smoothie business, which by the way, I still run today and I, I use the marketing that I help my clients with, I test everything out in that business. So I do practice what I preach. And so by then, you know, sharing that, there's a lot of lessons and workbooks and templates that I do share in the book so that people don't have to feel like they're just starting from scratch. And it's not a book based on just selling you something. It's really, it's a blueprint, if anything. Um, I would actually call it the key to the future success of any small business. Great. You talk about having an acronym. Um, that's a clever idea. I do that with my clients too. One of my clients was writing a self-help book and like the five principles I said, no, no, no. People don't want to know about five principles. They want to know the Amber method. Amber was her right. first name. So I said, what? She said, isn't that kind of vain? Isn't, you know, using my own name? And I said, You've obviously not been in the National Speakers Association uh, for long because uh, everyone does it. How do, and of course, A stands for, and she had to figure out what A st stood for, and it wasn't that hard a, a thing to do. How did you decide to choose your word and make your principles apply to that word? Well, it was sort of two things. I'm always preaching that people need to get into action, right? You can't just sit on your rump, as I said, and expect $10 million to show up in your bank account tomorrow. You need to get into action. And so I, actually, I started working with a business coach who helped me get really clear on what my brilliance was and how to share that with the world. And he's like, you're always saying action. You're always saying action. Let's, you know, let's make that the focus of the book. And so then I started sitting down and I was like, well, what, what words of what I've done in my system could fall into the A-C-T-I-O-N? And amazingly enough, it was just so simple for me to put that into place. A is for attention, C is for connect, T is for transactions, 
I is for invest, O is for ongoing, and N is for nurture. And obviously, I go more in depth in the book about that. So the second piece of why it all came together as well is when you see the cover of my book, I have these, people say I have big guns. <laughs> and that's because I'm always out there sort of making a muscle pose. And I wear a green shirt that says, I heart small business. That's why, again, I'm known as Small Business Stacy. So the idea was sort of action then sort of ties in with sort of a comic book character, right? Of wham, bam, kapow, getting your marketing into action. So it really all just sort of came together. And then I was able just to bang it out, start telling my story and putting it into each piece of the formula. That's great. And I know you've mentioned the, four, this, the six points several times until we actually told people what they were. So I'm sure people are like the, at the edge of their seat saying, tell me the formula, tell me the formula. I can, I can make you buy the book. Well, yeah, you should buy the book to learn more about the formula now that you know what the steps are. So I think we, we, we strung people along for as long as they could before they're chomping at the bit there. So, so that's really cool. Okay. Um, when you wrote your book, tell me about the stories that you have. Do you write about yourself as the hero or do you write about your clients as the hero or both? And how do you decide how to do that? You know, mine is a little bit of both because people really want to know my story, you mm -hmm. know, and I share the good, the bad and the ugly, you know, obviously in much more depth than I was able to share here with your audience today. But I, I walk them through, you know, where I was and, and then w when I was at that proverbial fork in the road, how I went through that process, how I came up with the action formula. And then when I get into the more specifics, like giving people the blueprint, then I talk about client examples of, you know, so it's not just me sort of chest beating. It's me really sharing how other people are then using this formula for their success as well. Wonderful. You know, I worked with a number of clients who were writing their memoirs and they hit a wall because the, it's hard for them to be vulnerable or to relive past experiences. And even for business writers, when I asked them to write more stories, they said, well, I don't write, I don't, I'm not a storyteller, you know, I'm, I'm a bottom line person. And then I asked them the Tony Robbins question, well, if you could write a story, what would the story be? And then they tell you the most wonderful stories where they are caring, nurturing, uh, helpful, exactly the kind of person you want to work for or have working for you as, as your consultant. And it's like, okay, that was fun getting it out of them. <laughs> so getting back to your side of the story, when you were, you were very vulnerable. I mean, I don't know that many people would share the fact that they were in debt for $500,000. Uh, that's, that's a lot of money. Uh, did you have any qualms about being vulnerable and opening yourself up to that? And if so, how did you overcome that? Dan, you bring up a great point, right? Because you think, oh, well, if I'm writing a book, I have to be so professional, right? Because now I'm going to be an authority and people are going to like put me up on a pedestal. So I can't say anything bad about myself. You know, I have to be this perfect person. And actually, it's the complete opposite, which humanizes you. And I have a saying in marketing that all marketing is H to H, human to human. People buy from people people buy from people. And so all of us have crap in our lives. <laughs> all of <laughs> us have crap. And you know what? By sharing your story of that crap and what you learn from it, it helps you teach others so that they can hopefully not have to go through that. And it humanizes you and makes you relatable. So, you know, yes, was I scared to tell people I was $500,000 in debt? Yes, and even talking about it today, it still brings a tear in my eye. But you know what? I am just now so passionate about, one, that is never going to happen to me again, and two, I, that's why I'm going out and telling the world about it via the book as my medium so that they never have to experience that. I'm just taking a note here. That's excellent. Uh, and your passion definitely comes through, which, which is wonderful. Um, it sounds like it was easy to write the book, and I know it isn't. 
what did you learn about, or what, what problems did you have in writing a book that you overcame that will help our listeners write their books? You know, it is hard to write a book. Um, for me, you know, everybody has a different approach of how to do it. Some people can just, um, you know, take a bunch of blog posts and have them made into a book. Some people can hire a ghostwriter like you and, you know, tell the mm -hmm. story and then have it done. For me, what worked was to lock myself in a room one day each weekend for like eight weekends and literally bang it out. And yes, I would hit that plateau like, I don't know what to say. It's not flowing. Like, I can't get it to work. But what I will say is that I work with an editor. So I got the core pieces into the book, and then the editor did her brilliance and made it sound <laughs> real. So, you know, if for the audience out there that's in the process of writing a book, definitely, you know, get a team of professionals around you to help you get it done. You know, if, if you're way of telling your story is by recording it, then record it and give it to somebody else who can put it into words. If the best way, if you like writing and then lock yourself in a room like I did, but don't feel like it has to be perfect. You, you can have a team around you who can edit it and design your cover and help you promote it and, and the whole process of it. But just, you know, as I'll say, get into action and do something. Excellent. I'm working with a client now who is involved in government sales. And as you can imagine, he writes and speaks like a bureaucrat, which is not what oh. people want to read. So I'm having a lot of fun turning what he has written, which is probably good if you're writing for his peers, but not good for the general public that he wants to have hire him as their coach or, or trainer so or consultant. So I'm, I'm having fun returning government ease into English. So, <laughs> but, I, I, but I couldn't do it by myself uh, either. You know, I needed his input in order to make that happen. Uh, so it does take a team to really create a great book. Let's talk about how you use your book in your marketing. How do you get the word out? How do you use the book to go to networking meetings, you know, whatever. Tell us how you use the book to actually get new business. You know, to me, my book is a very thick business card. Mm. I give them out widely and greatly. I actually give out a free copy on my website. People just have to pay for the shipping to get it to them. But this is my business card because it really is my story and helps people understand where I'm coming from um, even before I talk to them. So when I have a prospective client, I always send them a copy of my book before we even have a conversation. When I'm on people's podcasts, like I am with you, I want to give them a copy of the book so that they understand, you know, who I am. To me, the book is a huge, it's just, it's an incredible marketing piece. Um, not only can you have it in a print, um, format, but you can also have it in an online version and use Audible. So that's the next thing on my list is actually to record my own book and then have it published on Audible. Clever. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, you're very good verbally. You're, you're a good talker. Did you talk your book or did you write your book? Did you type it first or did you speak it? I typed. I'm, I'm actually much better at typing and words than I am in speaking. Oh, I wouldn't um, thought And that. <laughs> interestingly enough, the, the process of recording the book has been very, very difficult for me. Um, on the positive side, I mean, audio, Audible has very strict requirements for the quality of audio that they require. So it's almost like I'm just going to have to go into a recording studio because I've sent them a few samples and it hasn't passed their muster. Hmm. Um, and I would encourage people who are doing their own book to do an audio version of it because I've heard the ones where they hire somebody to read it for them. And sort of as you alluded to, like just the tone and the passion. And if it's, if it's truly based on you and your story and what you believe in, then it really should be your voice. Very true. A friend of mine gave me that same advice over lunch the other day. He has a book uh, by Harper Collins. It's selling very well. They just sold the, the Chinese rights and some other rights. So the book is it's a great book. But he didn't do the audio. 
And a friend of his listened to the audio. He wasn't impressed with the, with the guy doing it, but, you know, he didn't have much say in the matter and he's too close to it. So he wasn't really sure if he was objective enough. And a friend of his listened to the audio and said, you know, they didn't do you any favors. And that's a shame because this is a book that could have a big potential on Audible because it's in sales and sales book do well and it's not your typical sales book and it's shown that it has legs. So it's a shame that he didn't get the right talent. And it wasn't his choice. It was it was his publisher's choice, unfortunately. And they got a guy who just couldn't care less. And, hmm. uh, you know, so it was a shame. So that, that that's too bad. Uh, what other advice would you have for doing audio? Uh, tell us a little bit more about those restrictions that Audible has. I don't think many people know about that. Well, I guess if you go to the Audible website, they have a section on there that talks about their requirements, their audio requirements for um, publishing your book on their platform. Um, obviously, no muffled sound around you. Um, it needs to be very high quality. Um, and I tend to have like a nasally kind of a voice. So um, also, you know, depending how close or how far you speak to the mic can impact this. And I've had people tell me, well, you know, stuff yourself in a closet with pillows all around mm -hmm. you and record. But I tried doing that and that didn't, you know, didn't pass their muster either. So <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, you know, since I've never truly had success in publishing on Audible yet, it, it's been a process. Maybe that'll be my next book, you know, how to, <laughs> how to get your book published on Audible. Hey. Um, but I think it's just a great complimentary piece to have that in addition to your printed book. Great. Now, I know from sales figures that I've seen on Publishers Weekly and other places that Audible and audiobooks are definitely outselling other media and it's it's the way of the future. People want to listen to books in their cars mm -hmm. when they're walking, when they're working out. It makes a lot of sense. Let's go back to something you said earlier about you send the book to everyone and they feel like they know you. Can you give mm -hmm. me an example or a story when you met with a new prospect who had seen your book and what was their reaction and how did that transaction go? Well, you know, I, I'll send it to a prospective client. Um, one, so they get to know me. And two, they also then understand my approach to marketing because I lay out my system. What, what is in there is what I do for my clients. And so then that, one, it helps humanize me. Um, two is that prospect who gets something physical in the mail sort of has now a greater appreciation. I'm a big proponent of using direct mail. I think sometimes the cheap way people just want to send an email or a text or, you know, just quick and easy, right? So I like, there's something powerful. Not only do I send the book, but I autograph the book for them. I have a customized bookmark that I include in there. I have a, a little note card that I include with the book and, you know, talking about them and what I've learned about them, excited to continue the conversation. And I also have these little printed um, note, sticky notes that say, get into action. And so that's then a keeper, right? They're going to keep it on their desk. And anytime they write a note, my branding is right there in front of them. So it keeps me front of mind. And my book is written in, in a very sort of storytelling kind of way. It's not a difficult read. So most of my clients can go through it in like over a weekend. So I sent this, here's a great example. I sent this book to a, a very large healthcare technology company that has over 50 employees and they were looking to um, bring somebody on to help with their marketing. So they were interviewing a bunch of different, you know, big name marketing agencies. And, but I'm known as the small biz marketing specialist. I sent them a copy of the book, scheduled a follow-up call, and landed the account. So out of all of the competition, I got the job and it, it's my largest client to date. And I really attribute that because I had a book. Congratulations. That's great. And that's exactly what we're trying to prove on this show that the book can lead to big to business. You know, mm -hmm. I call it a book is a big business card. You called it uh, a very thick business card. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I loved it. That's great. It sounds like you self-published the book, correct? I went through um, 
KDP. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you self-published. Okay. Yep. Everyone makes mistakes self-publishing the book. So let's learn from your mistake. <laughs> what, 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 what did you wish you had done differently? Or what did you realize after the fact that you would have done differently? Hmm. My process was actually pretty smooth, but mm -hmm. I will say I did not do it myself. I had my editor do it for me. So because I had never set um, up an account and had, you know, again, they have requirements about the format and the whole structure of everything. So in my book, I talk about do what you do best, outsource the rest. Mm -hmm. Well, I took my advice and I did what I did best and outsourced the rest. So while I might be great at writing a book, I'm not the best at how to format and publish a book. So I hired somebody to do that for me. Got it. Okay. KDP makes it very easy, by the way. So I do it hmm. for a lot of my clients too, because it really is quite simple. They, they've really made self-publishing very easy. It's the copy editing and the layout and the proofreading and the writing and the editing. That still has to be done. But as far as getting your book online and in people's hands, couldn't be any easier. When I when I wrote my first book in 1991, when, it was, when self publishing was really a whole different ball game, it was not easy. And now it's like anyone can easily print a book. So that's really cool. Stacy, as we wrap up here, why don't you tell us how people can get in touch with you and who your perfect client is? So if they're listening, they can get in touch with you. Well, thanks for asking. My home base is smallbizmarketingspecialist.com, smallbizmarketingspecialist.com. That is my home base. There is a lot of free resources on there that any small business owner or not so small can tap into and take advantage of the free content there. I also run a free Facebook group. So if you go to Facebook and type in small biz marketing, success and then look under the groups tab you'll see my group and that is a great community for you to join um, network with your fellow small business owners ask questions share your struggles it's a very active and engaged group and for anybody in your community who wants to reach out to me personally they can do so via email smallbizstacy at gmail.com so that's small, B-I-Z-S-T-A-C-E-Y at gmail.com. Great. And uh, I can't let you go without asking one more question because small business means different things to different people. You said small, your largest client is 50 people and you thought mm -hmm. that was big. There are people who think $300 million is a small business and there are people who think that $50,000 is a small business. So mm -hmm. who is your perfect client? So if they're listening here, you, they, they, you won't be wasting their time and they won't be wasting your time if they're not a good fit. You know, it's a dichotomy, right? Because it's interesting people view small business differently. I have a client who is a solopreneur. I work with a lot of solopreneurs. I've helped a realtor become number one in her area. I work with an electrician, so I and I work with a dessert shop on Main Street. But I am a perfect fit for a larger growing company, let's say 15 to 50 employees, who is growing and wants to get to the next level, but doesn't have a full-time marketing person in place to do that. So I and my team would be a great fit to help that organization because we can come in from day one, get the strategy and the plan in place, and as I say, get your marketing into action. Perfect. Thank you so much for visiting with us today. Thanks, Dan. It's been great being with you and your listeners. Thanks for listening to Top Business Leaders, the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.